Okay, so first things first, if you see me looking off in this direction, it's because this is where I have my laptop. I kind of pulled up everything when I made the list. Um, so I'm gonna be reading off of this. And also these are not going to be in any specific order. So these are just kind of tips in general. So if y'all want to write these down or just listen, whatever you want to do, I'm just going to kind of be talking through, reading off what I have on my list and then kind of emphasizing on each point. So. Also, this video is going to be geared towards wives, wives. Wives. <laughs> wives. I'm saying that because I don't want people to be in the comments saying, well, the men should do this too. Well, maybe a man one day will create a video for husbands on what they should do with their points. This is not about the husbands. Of course, of course, a husband and wife, you know, they should, you should both come to terms about what it is that you expect in a relationship, whatever. There are certain things the husband should do in the relationship, but I'm not going to be emphasizing on that today because that's not what this video is about. This video is gearing just towards women, you as a wife, you preparing to become a wife, you as a mother. If there's something in here that I say that you don't agree with because you think maybe um, that's something the man should be doing. That's not what I mean. I'm not saying that you need to do it because the man's not doing it. I'm just telling you this is something that you need to practice because you two could be doing it together. So maybe, like I said, somebody will make a video for them on husbands, but that's not my place. This is for wives. Number one, in no specific order, your husband will not know what you are thinking. So this means your, even though us as women think that there are certain things that men know, they don't. Like you would expect for your husband to do certain things or you might want him to do this for you for this event or this holiday, this anniversary, whatever. Men do not think the same way as women. So we have to remember that as a woman. And no matter what your man is like, if you say, oh, he's not like that, he's so sensitive, da, 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 there will be things that they drop the ball on and they forget about or things that they don't know and they're not psychic. Even though we want them to be and even though we expect them to be, they're not. So you have to talk it out. You cannot expect for them to know certain things. You have to talk to them about what basically what you want them to know or whatever the topic is that you're getting upset about or whatever. Number two, you and your husband will not be on the same level of organization, cleanliness, whatever. I had to learn this the hard way. When I met my husband, we were not, I was really young and you know, I was just so excited about being with him and you know, getting to marry him and live with him and that I will say that as I got older, I became more organized, you know, just as we started getting our life together. And I'd always like to keep the house clean and everything, but that was something that I let get to me so bad. And this is another thing that emphasizes on talking. There would be things that he would do that I would freak out about in my mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> not in my mind. I would freak out in real life too. So I'm not going to try to make it sound like I was perfect because I was not. I would definitely freak out, but I'm saying that because you also need to talk about boundaries as far as, you know, what you expect from them on their level of cleanliness or organization or da da da. As long as you say it, say it. <laughs> Don't, you know, I have to yell it. <laughs> Y'all can talk it out and talk about what you expect and just kind of put it out there. And then from that point forward, girlfriend, I'm give you can freak out. If at that point y'all have gone over these terms and they don't do it, then whatever. You can freak out at that time. But you can't freak out again without talking about it or without letting them know, hey, this bothers me, whatever. Just do not go on bottling it all up inside because that's never good for no one. Number three, be careful with your words during a fight. You cannot take them back. This is where I love to practice the five second rule. These are things that I'm also saying to myself because I need to even hear them again. I'm not saying this because these are things that we don't do all the time. Sometimes we slip up and sometimes I am I don't follow these the way that I should, but I just wanted to share them with y'all. So the five second rule is if I'm ever thinking about something like a comeback, if I just wanna give it to him, I tell myself to count to five. And in my head, if after that I 
you know, still I'm holding on to this rage. I'm not suggesting to let it rip, but I'm just saying, give yourself five seconds because once you calm down, you might think differently, but if you don't, if after the five seconds is up, then if you still are holding on to this, that's gonna be something that again, talk it out. Y'all are gonna have to talk about. If it's a serious problem, it's not just gonna go away, you know, with the five second rule. But this is just something that, especially us as women, our emotions go crazy. Be mindful of what you say, especially during an argument. Oh, number four, never, ever, 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 talk bad about your spouse to anyone else this is something that we learn pastor frank taught us this when we had to before matt and i got married to use our pastor we had to go through a couple weeks of um kind of like a couple's therapy or no that's not the word couples counseling i guess it was just kind of preparing you for marriage it was the pastor was giving us all these tips we had to meet with him like once or twice a week um for so many weeks just before we got married and he was kind of going over everything with us giving us key points you know for advice on how to be successful with marriage and i really found that these were things that helped us tremendously moving forward because what this means is never, ever, ever talk bad about your spouse if y'all are in an argument or if you're going through some trials to your family members, your friends, anyone. I know that's super, super hard because especially us as women, you know, we have our little groups of friends, but you can't do that because, and this, this is something that so many times already in our five years of marriage, I've caught myself wanting to do this, but I don't. So many times you will be in an argument with your spouse and you will say things, maybe not to them, but to your family, to your friends, whatever on, you know, oh, he did this and this, this, and this, and I think that he needs to do whatever. And you know, y'all are just gonna be going at it and then they're gonna get a bad taste in their mouth. But what's gonna happen is you love that person. You love your husband. So more times than not, you're just saying things because you're upset. You're gonna be over that in the next couple days, but guess what? Those people will not. They're even, even if they don't hold a grudge to your spouse, they're always going to have that in the back of their mind. Whatever you told them, they're always gonna have a bad taste in their mouth towards your spouse, and that's just not good. You don't ever, and you're going to be looking like, you know, you're complaining about your spouse. Like, what does that say for your relationship if you're just constantly nagging about them to everyone else and not talking to them about it, you know? Overall, it's just not healthy. If you want a healthy relationship, do not talk bad about your spouse to other people. And anytime that you can, lift them up. If somebody's talking bad about your spouse, oh honey, girlfriend, you better jump in there and whoop some tail or you better jump in there and take up for them because you are the other half to your spouse. Do not let nobody talk bad about them you have to lift them up because if you're not then who's going to you are the other half to them you know y'all when you became married are one so if the other person's not there to defend themselves you better be doing it honey because that's your husband nobody's gonna talk about your husband where are we at um number five make your house a home you want to make your home your sanctuary that means that you know you this doesn't have to mean that you always have to have candles lit and da da da. No, just make it somewhere, you know, decorate your space how you want to make it. You, there's so many trends nowadays, you don't have to follow trends. You know, who's gonna be coming in your house? And I have to tell myself this all the time too for I'm such a clean freak organization wise. And I'm like, why am I stressing about all of this being perfect today? Like nobody's gonna come in my house and judge me or there's not some kind of award you get for cleanest house or whatever. But you do want to keep your household up. That means like, make sure, you know, just keep it tidy. So keep things, just don't let things go overdue, you know, keep a schedule if you have to of how to stay on top of things like such as the laundry or whatever. Um, laundry, dishes. Dishes are something that I kind of see that are usually scattered around the place because of my little kids and uh, just little snacks, like stuff like that. Keeping your house clean, just kind of decorating it in the way, you know, whatever y'all love in lots of pictures. This is something I didn't used to have pictures, but now I love them because it's kind of a reminder. It's a reminder of what we've done, what we've made. And every time I see it, it just makes my heart warm. 
So just keep things in your home that are going to make you happy and just make your house a sanctuary. That is gonna be something that's so important. You as the mother, that, I'm sorry, I don't care what you say, that is your job. You and just being the mom with, um, you know, your motherly instincts, your tactics, your nurturing, whatever, you're going to be the one to make your house feel like a home anyway. Just kind of keep it up. It'll, your husband will really appreciate that. Your kids, they won't notice. They're gonna be trying to make it messy all the time anyways. But that just says, I think that says a lot about just, um, just a person, you know, how their personal space is and everything like that. Be mindful of your husband's want and needs as well. So this means in the bedroom, and a lot of people might be uncomfortable about talking about this, but this is all about marriage. I mean, you know, come on. What is a healthy marriage without a healthy sex life? I'm sorry if this makes you uncomfortable, but it's important. It's important to talk about the things whatever it is that you want or you expect from your husband and he needs to do the same for you if that's something that's going to be an uncomfortable conversation for y'all well there might be something a little bit deeper that y'all need to talk about because sex should not be something in your relationship that is a touchy subject it should be something that you two can talk about because sex with your partner is that you know that is what marriage is that is the only person that you are to be with your for your life you know if this is your partner that you've chosen then this is something that only you two can do together and it's important to talk about it and keep yourself up this mean this does not mean that you have to go and try to look like a victoria's secret model this means just keep up with your appearance like just try to do little things that might make a difference you know like do your hair some days or you know go buy a new outfit or maybe you know maybe some new lingerie for the bedroom whatever whatever it is that is going to make you feel better but also something that can kind of cater to your husband as well that is something that they will like and they will appreciate um and it's not impossible don't tell me it's impossible don't tell me you're too busy whatever because here i am even though i'm still young a lot of people say oh you're young y'all can do that y'all can keep up with three kids you can keep up with your appearance no that doesn't mean anything i have just as many chores and just as much work to do as anyone else and i've found the time so y'all can find the time number seven image is obviously not everything and while it's not everything it also does need to be something that you're mindful of you know don't fully let yourself go just because you know you have a tough job or you have a lot of kids or you have a lot of things to do da, da, da. you know you will find the time for it if you want to make the time for it I want to be the best version of myself that I can be for my husband, but not only for him, for my kids too. So I like to keep my parents up, but I also like to keep up with my health because that is something, especially with having the little kids, I'm always having to chase them around and I want to make sure that I can keep up with them. I wanna make sure that we, I can do all the activities that they do. So just kind of keeping up with your parents and making sure that you're staying healthy, doing all the things that you need to do to take care of you. Even if this means, you know, like for me, I went and got my hair done, went and got my eyebrows done. That was just something I could do to kind of run off, get away from myself. And that was good for me. I had been stuck in this house, especially with everything with the virus and all of that. And I needed some me time. I needed some mom time and I deserve that. Do not let anybody think that you don't deserve that girlfriend because you do. Just because we're moms, just because we work, just because we're wives does not mean that you cannot go get your hair done, you know, get a spray tan if you want one, get your eyebrows done, get your eyelashes done, whatever you want. If you have time for it and the money for it, then by all means, go do it because you deserve it. And do not ever let anyone make you feel guilty for doing that because you're allowed. You're allowed, mom, you're allowed. Uh, small acts of kindness can go a long, long way. Do things that maybe your husband or your kids might not expect. So something that I do, and it's something I just, I love to do because I feel like it is just a kind little gesture is I always wash, fold, and set out Matt's clothes for the night before work. I know this is something that might be so small, but it makes him not have to run around crazy in the morning because he has to wake up so early. And for 
it also keeps him from having to stress about what clothes am I wearing, you know? They're right there, he can grab them and pick them up. And I know it's something that he really appreciates, especially on the mornings that I might be too busy and I don't get to do it. He really, when he is running around having to do it, he knows like that is something that he enjoys when I set out his clothes in little stuff like that or cooking their favorite meal or whatever. That is another thing to emphasize on. It is to cook. You don't have to be the best cook ever. You don't have to cook extravagant meals, but honey, you need to learn. I got so much stuff that I know from other YouTube videos. Paula Deen and Barefoot Contessa, oh my gosh, I love them so much. I could spend all day long watching them. And that's what you need to do. You need to find somebody that you love to watch and learn some recipes from them. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes if you want to just throw some things in a crock pot, which I'm not judging because that is my favorite thing to do. If that's what you have to do, then that's fine. Nobody's going to judge you, but you do. Ooh, my laundry's done. <laughs> you do need to learn how to cook because that's something that, um, and I'm not going to say, you know, we totally get takeout at least like, two times at least two times a week I mean I'm not cooking every single night but it is something that you need to learn how to do in case you need to do it or you definitely need to do it for healthier meals and when you have little kids it's so much better than just always feeding them processed stuff when you're cooking and you're using fresh ingredients you know exactly what's in it and it's fun I found that it's like a really good hobby for me, it's something that I can let my stress go and it's something that I truly love. I didn't think that I would love it the way that I did because I just thought as a wife, I needed to learn how to cook, but it's something that I really enjoy. So if you can just find some people that you like to watch, I love Paula Deen because she's the bomb and I love Barefoot Contessa. Both of them, I could just, I could watch them all day long, but like that, just go find somebody that you love to watch. Um, there's so many pages on Facebook. I have some videos on my youtube if you want to check out some of my recipes but you need somebody who you can really connect with so find that person and i promise you it can be fun but you need to learn how to cook also let it go and i'm gonna end this video with this because until i can find some more points but i'm gonna say let it go so many times in our marriage <clears throat> there's been things that I've wanted to complain about and I've wanted to get mad over whatever. I just, I had to start learning to let it go because you will be so much happier. You'll be so much more content with yourself and your relationship if you can learn to let the small things go. And a lot of it was what I was talking about in the beginning, the organization stuff. There's so many things that your husband, they're not going to know unless you tell them, unless you talk about it. You know, they're are so many things with coming with being a wife that you're not going to know about until you become a wife until you start living with someone else another human being you're going to find out that oh this is not all glitz and glam and i promise the first year or two are the hardest if you can get by with the first year or two when you're really discovering who you are who your husband is who y'all y'all are as a couple you'll be so much happier when you learn that the little small things are not things for you to freak out about. And that doesn't mean for you to be like a doormat. Don't let them walk all over you. But you know, there are some things that not everything that makes you upset, you have to react to. You need to learn to let it go. And I promise you'll be so much happier. I thought of some other things during this video that I could um, talk about but I think I've already made this one long enough so these are a couple key points for you and if y'all have any questions or if you want to emphasize on any of these leave some comments below let's talk about it and if I would love to hear if you have anything that you suggest you know what are things that work for you as a wife that you love to do or you swear by that has just made your rela relationship with your husband so much easier. I'm going to leave y'all with that and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit subscribe below if you want to be alerted every time I upload and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye!